strikes on the positions of the ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces, of the Islamic State Central Africa province from where they are operating in the North Kivu areas or provinces of Ituri and Beni, areas that have seen a state of a siege take center stage after, you know, these rebel groups have been rearing their very ugly heads unabated. We're talking about over 358 rebel groups rearing their very ugly heads in the eastern parts of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, what you saw on Tuesday was only part of the story. We were actually clamoring to join the DRC fight as early as June. So please, we are being joined by Honorable Okelo Oriem, that is courtesy of Stephen Imbida, who is going to be interacting with him on this issue of the invasion of the ADF in the eastern parts of the DRC. Good, good morning, Imbida. Yes, morning to you, Romeo Wusiku. Yes, we are here in Bogolovia, the home of uh, the minister in the Foreign Affairs Ministry that he is in charge of international relations. And of course, when we talk about international relations, we know there is also the issue of an interior airport that is uh, putting mm -hmm. Uganda in the light with uh, China. But we shall reach there. Let's first of, of all go to the issues on the front line. Uganda going to the DLC, the Eastern Congo. This is the third day after the offensive, the attack. What do we do now from the battlefield, Honaibo Okeroriem? First of all, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, mm. uh, Stephen. Um, I'm glad to, to tell Ugandans mm. that uh, the operation against uh, the terrorist ADF uh, from day one has been uh, very successful. It was decided strategically and well planned that we should give them a surprise attack in order for us to be able to deal with them effectively. Mm. We have had uh, a collaboration and assistance from some of our very good friends and partners who have given us valuable int intelligence so that we can have a surgical strike uh, at the heart of the ADF camps in, uh, in, 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 the, in the DRC. And I'm glad to inform you that uh, the UPDF saturated that area thoroughly with artillery, thoroughly with uh, Air Force uh, uh, attacks, and I can, uh, and the first initial reports we got yesterday is that we gave them a, a real uh, bloody nose, we minced them completely, and when the tr troops are now uh, op uh, operating the area on the ground to mop up and try and get a hold of those who might have escaped the first round of, uh, of attack. When you talk about uh, going on the, on the fort and in the air, uh, you were trying to paint a picture that, yes, you're doing some uh, great work on in, the, in the offensive. But there are victims that could be maybe the communities that are around the areas of Ituri, uh, the areas of East, that Eastern Congo. That we took very serious consideration to ensure that there was no colossal damage or uh, any uh, da damage to, to the citizens in, in, in that area. So there was a lot of caution, and we assured the international community and others that whatever attack we are going to uh, undertake in that area should be a surgical attack directly into the heart of the camp or where this ADF uh, are in to avoid us being, uh, hitting where the civilian target is. And, and the results that so far have come out mm. is that uh, the, we have not uh, had any injuries or, 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 or dam damages to civilians. Uh, stu uh, citizens. When you talk about uh, the, this offensive, specifically for these ADF rebels, and they, of course when you're in an attack, you lose, you win some. And you are, at least for now, trying to say that you are successful in the offensive. Any, any casualties from our side that we maybe we, 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 we could be naming for now, that maybe we've lost oh, these uh, the armed vehicles or armored vehicles or even... No. I can assure you that we have not lost one single asset, we have not killed, uh, lost one single soldier, because the initial surgical attack was, uh, was monitored from the, uh, for an aerial, aerially, aer uh, from the air, aerial, it was by aerial monitoring, mm. and the, the attack by artillery was by precision to the right GPS position of where the, the enemies are. And our, our flights, our jet fighters uh, managed to hit this, this guy's camp without, uh, uh, within uh, 10 to, to 5 meters of where they are. So th they have been hit very, very hard. How was this battle, this offensive, how was it organized? And so, so talking about strategic organization how was it planned how was it organized for how long have you been in the preparations because i know uh, there has been talks between kampala and chinshasha first of all we'd like to thank uh, president shikedi 
for his uh, support and assistance and his decision uh, uh, from the time he came to office that uh, Eastern DRC has to be neutralized of all forms of negative forces. Mm. So from the very time Shekedi came into office, he has been, we've been very close touch uh, with excellent, the President Museveni on many things, but also including security. We have always, for a long time since he came to government, been working out modalities on how we could get onto the ADF. And it has been elusive to us because in order for us to go into another country to deal with a situation like ADF, in particular the DRC, where we have, we have been before and where mistakes have been made, in this particular case, we needed legitimacy in all forms of manner and needed cooperation and, and assistance from all the neighboring uh, countries plus uh, regional uh, organizations. Now, uh, the ADF uh, mistook this uh, uh, the timing, the, the delaying timing, the, the, the image that were impassive, uh, mistook us to be weak and not bothered about the activities. And I'm glad that the mistake they made uh, on that day when they, they bombed Kampala then triggered and gave us the opportunity to then be able to do, do, they, to do what we're doing today. Because hadn't they done that, we'd still have, have to convince uh, the international community, convince Shekedi, convince Sadak and many others on why we should go into the DRC. But stupidly, they made this big error, very big error, which they made, which gave us the opportunity now to go in on, on many grounds. First, we sought legitimacy from the, from the members of the Security Council. It's actually the President met all the um, ambassadors of the P5 members of the Security Council in Kampala and gave them irrefutable evidence of what the ADF was doing in Eastern DRC. He then, we then had uh, uh, talks with members of SADAC. The, the, the President was in consultation with the Shekedi. The President was in, co in consultation with his friends and colleagues and peers in the East African uh, uh, community. And then we talked to individual countries if they can avail us their assets of surveillance. Individual countries. So you mean uh, within the region here, the regional leaders are also in agreement with Absolutely. you for the offensive? Countries like Kenya, countries like Tanzania have had very serious experience of terrorism. Very serious. Uh, uh, case of terrorism in the past and, uh, and they have been very co cooperative they have sent us a message of solidarity they are standing by us the, the intelligence uh, uh, officers, intelligence organizations are working close with us on this matter because they, we, they are also watching our rear and also pre pre uh, preparing for the possible retaliation what is Rwanda saying? That, that might uh, uh, arise w with this matter. Well, I, I, we have not had an opportunity. I, I met the Rwandese ambassador mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. and I did inform him that uh, we had a, a very open engagement with this matter. And I'm glad to inform you that, um, well, Rwanda has no, no, have not given any objection, which for us is, is very good, because in the absence of objection, if they had objected, it would have been of concern to us. You know, objection, but Rwanda would you not, not, not giving you an objection doesn't mean that they are... Uh, they, are they are on your side or they are but against also you. It, it means that they are not against us, which is positive. At least for now, maybe. We, we, which is positive. Mm. And uh, they knew we were going to uh, attack. They are fully aware that preparation on high, high gear. There's no doubt about it. And if uh, they, they were going to object, they would have objected earlier. And they didn't. So we are happy that uh, even though we did not get any direct positive support, but the fact that uh, they were indifferent and they did not object, we are so happy with that. That was uh, at the other side of uh, the diplomacy, uh, organization and diplomacy levels. How about militarily, uh, this intelligence and the like? How was the preparation like on the military side? On the military side, the, the UPDF have been rehearsing and exercising this exercise now for a long time. There was a time uh, in early in this year where there was a big uh, con consecration of the UPDF on the border, and, and we had at that time planned to go in as, as UPDF, but the the president on, on, on second thoughts thought it was not wise based on the experience uh, of us being in the DRC at that time, and, and our, our UPDF was stepped down. Nevertheless, they continued exercising and practicing uh, the operation uh, all at all this time, and it made it easier for us this time to be able to go in after our troops have been in rehearsal and practice for, for a very long time. So from that aspect, we're very happy that our forces, ground forces, are fully prepared and able to uh, effect this operation 
with the best, b least minimum uh, damage. On the intelligence side, we have been trying to gather as much intelligence as possible. Uh, basically, for us to be successful th in this case in the first place. But also, more importantly, to make sure that this, because this operation is expensive, mm. we need, cannot come out, uh, we cannot have a second shot at it. So the operation should be su so successful that we wipe this matter with ADF once and for all. It becomes something historical. So I'm glad that our very good friends uh, out there, mm. whom I cannot name now, availed us uh, high-valued intelligence which they would not ordinarily uh, share in other circumstances. Does, does that mean that uh, when you give the assurance that you will not be, do you give, a, you can you confirm now that you will not be leaving DRC until these guys are over in and out, outside of Congo? This operation is intended to wipe out the entire structure and every single individual who is a, a member of the ADF, who is a threat to the people and the properties of the people of Uganda, we're determined to eliminate, wipe, and grind them to the soil this time. Even their allies? Anybody and everybody who is involved and is on the ground where we're operating, and you're a member and associated with the ADF, you'll be history. You know, tomorrow. Honorable, you've invaded Congo, but we know that there are many terror cells within Uganda, at least going by the bombings that you have already linked to ADF. Uh, there are guys in, K in Kawempe, in the other side of Entebbe. You, police has been digging these cells. But still, that means that me maybe these guys you're going to the forest, uh, the I I Tuli and Eastern Congo, when these guys have already, some of them already left and established cells elsewhere. We, we, are, we are fully aware of that. We are fully aware that uh, there might be sleeping cells, there might be fresh cells. There might be uh, cells operating and picking up intelligence on behalf of the ADF. We are, we are aware that they are, in, in, uh, they are operating in the region, in Kayunga and other areas, uh, luring children and young men to go and be trained in, uh, in, in Eastern DRC. But we feel that where if we uh, damage and totally destroy the headquarters, destroy where they train and prepare uh, these young men and young women, to come and, and cause uh, damage in Uganda, then the, the structures in Uganda will have no point of referral mm. for, get, for them to give them directives of what to do or what not to do. So if we hit and destroy the entire structure and the leadership who give instructions and plan these operations in Uganda, we feel that will have weakened these uh, groups who are in Uganda. And in Uganda, we are working now, and this time, with uh, more vigor than before to ensure we go step by step by step uh, uh, w to ensure that we identify and destroy uh, those cells and those who are operating in, in Kampala and outside Kampala. Since these guys, uh, the ADF, I'm talking about the ADF, when they left Kampala, when they left Uganda and went to, into Eastern Congo, mm -hmm. time has passed. What has softened this round, this time round, the heart of Sisekedi and the entire government that you were not able to convince them to do in the olden days? I think that uh, it comes down to the, the, the will of the, of the leaders. Mm. Uh, the previous uh, uh, leaders of, uh, uh, of the DRC uh, always, and, 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 and from the time of Mobutu and beyond, they considered Eastern Congo as being very far away from Kinshasa and having no direct impact uh, uh, I I on, on them. Uh, Eastern DRC was seen as a part of Congo which can be sacrificed. Mm. And as such, the previous administration made no effort or did not invest in any effort to make sure that, that Eastern DRC was rid of all these negative forces and, and many which, which, which are there. Because you cannot have your own country, like we cannot have Uganda, and decide that part of Uganda, we should leave it to, the, uh, to, to, to uh, negative forces to operate and, uh, and uh, as they so wish. We, can, we cannot happen. We cannot, as Uganda, sacrifice and say, okay, let leave, let's leave this, allow Eastern Uganda. That's why we did not allow Konyi to be part of Northern Uganda. We, we went for Konyi year after year after year until we got rid of, of, of Konyi. That is what they should, the, the previous leaders of But he's still hunting him in Central should, African Republic. But they're not a threat to Uganda now. Mm. They, they will never, ever be a threat to, to the people of Uganda again. And if they dared 
then I'm sure <laughs> I can tell you that uh, based on the modern technology and the capacity of ADF today, will hit them even before they enter Sudan. So uh, that, that is history. But going back to the point, mm. the, the le previous leaders of the, uh, of the DRC had a responsibility to get rid of all, all the negative forces in their country and have their countries free of any terrorism, just like any other country should have done. And if they had done that, we would not be talking about ADF today. Now, Shekeli, when he came into power, took up the responsibility and decided that Eastern DRC is as, as, as important as Western DRC, as important as Northern and Southern DRC. And that's why even on the issue of the road, he talked to President Museveni and yes. he realized that in order to have peace in Eastern DRC, you have to have dividends. I thought maybe... Now, dividends, mm. dividends means bringing development, bringing power, Bring infrastructures like roads, maybe that road cons the construction and deal that help is the one that also softened him more than the issue of him coming to and looking at the eastern that, Congo. That, that the road is just nothing compared to the the capacity of the DRC. That that struck that road mm. is so important uh, for uh, peace in the region because the people in the region are now seeing the development. This beautiful road, this beautiful opportunity this road brings, and people then decide that why should we strike against the government? Why should we oppose the government when the government is bringing us uh, the, the, the development? In that, uh, so we are taking power in the eastern DRC. We are taking more roads into, into, into the, the DRC. Hospitals are being uh, built in eastern DRC. So there's dividends for peace. And this is what Kishash uh, Shekeri, fortunately, is working on. And that's why he's working very close with us to help us pacify Eastern DRC. Honorable Henry Kwenye Oliem, uh, you have invaded Eastern Congo as UPDF or as Uganda, but we know that there is the UN stabilization mission, stabilization mission in, that is MONUSCO in Eastern Congo. It is saying, according to the press conference that they had yesterday, that at least for them they are there to protect the Congolese army, but not the, the region of bloc that may be is going to, into Congo to, for whatever reason, they are, we will not be on your side, at least militarily. We don't need them. In Uganda, those we, in this government mm. considered MONUSCO as a useless group. I will tell you here thoroughly. Mm -hmm. They are a useless group, and we consider them as preservatives. Those are preserving terrorism in Eastern DRC. Period. We have no, we have no good right, words. I beg we, your they listen to me. Mm. We have got no good words for them. Because they have been there for so many years. Over 20 years. And what have they done? Tell me something good they have done there. Then I will tell you something good. And, uh, why, why I'll give you a, uh, then you can prove me wrong. Nothing. So as far as we're concerned, good luck to them. We don't need their, 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 their uh, 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 military assistance. We don't want, even if they want to give us a cup of tea, we don't want it. Uh, the UPDF has capacity to do what is doing the Eastern DRC without the assistance in any form or manner. It's on record mm -hmm. that President Museven has continuously said that these are people who are preserving terrorism in Eastern DRC, and that's my position as this well. This is uh, a, a mission that was even approved by the UN Security Council, uh, and uh, money is still uh, ongoing. Uh, it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Because I think the, that, that mission should have been wrapped up and, and the money saved uh, for other, other things. It's a joke. Because what are they doing in Eastern DRC all these years? What are they doing in the DRC? It is just because they are, uh, it's a mission set up by the United Nations Security Council. It does not mean one cannot question after 10 years of it being there. One cannot question its, its purpose there. One cannot question what it is doing there. Is we, we, have, we have a right uh, as a member of the, United, uh, of the Security Council. We have a right as a country which are facing the brunt of what's happened to, uh, to, uh, from Eastern, uh, Eastern DRC. A country who are facing what two questions. Mm -hmm what MONUSCO is doing in that region. What would you, want, uh, what would you have wanted it to do that it has not done? That you, uh, you are now even well, branding they, it they, they, an they, enemy? They claim, I even, even more recently, hmm. there was, uh, I think, a French or, edit, or Italian uh, a diplomat who was killed in Eastern DRC, right under the nose of, of, uh, <laughs> of MONUSCO. Now, this diplomat is coming all the way from Kishasha, listen, mm. all the way from Kishasha to Western DRC to evaluate the situation in Eastern DRC. And the MONUSCO could not protect or give him intelligence that, listen here, you're coming in this region. 
This region today will inform you that it is dangerous and we rather not come. So in the past, this woman came all the way thinking he's just coming to evaluate what's eaten the other In the perspective of Kampala. He was killed, losing, and he left a wife, two young daughters who were suffering because Monusco did not uh, give him the, the, the intelligence. Uh, the honorable, in the eyes of Kampala, Monusco is just there in Congo, wasting time. A waste of time, period. We have got not, nothing to talk more about Monusco. As far as my, my president mm. is on record, and I'll repeat what my president has said, that Monusco is uh, just there as an institution to preserve terrorism in the DRC. Let's go to, of course, still in, on the offensive against the ADF in Congo. Kampala, in parliament, the president was supposed to brief parliament, before, of course, constitutionally, before the offensive, or even at least after the constitution, be, within 72 hours. Parliament would have, be, would have been informed about the offensive. Up to now, of course, the, day, the 72 hours will elapse today. No one has come from the commander in chief of the armed forces. <laughs> Laughable? <laughs> you know, you know, uh, <laughs> so you want us to warn ADF that, you know, guys, <laughs> uh, prepare yourself. Uh, we are coming. Uh, you sit there and wait for us. And then, w then we will, <laughs> we will <laughs> wait for. Just sit, don't move. And and and, uh, and 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 we'll come and bomb you while you're sitting waiting. The, where's the element of surprise? Where is the element of you, surprise? Mm -hmm. You, you cannot uh, 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 respond uh, to uh, or uh, get involved in in, in in such an operation and and be successful if you don't have the element of surprise. You have and been the element of surprise was on our side, and we took full advantage of the element of surprise. And because of that element of surprise, whoever is saying that this matter should have been debated should rather be standing up and applauding, applauding the government for a job well done. But if you start questioning uh, that, oh, you should have come to parliament and this matter should have been debated, then you, you, you are, what you're saying is the government should have won the, 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 the ADF. You have been a member of parliament before. The, the minister of defense mm. will come to the uh, parliament and make a statement in the parliament informing the, government, the, the parliament the decision by the government of Uganda to go to the DRC and attack and, uh, and, 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 and get rid of ADF. And the Minister of Defense will explain to parliament why that decision was taken as it was done. And I'm sure that the right honorable members of parliament, honorable members of parliament, who are very reasonable individuals, will understand and appreciate uh, the, the reason and the decision of government to go in that manner. In the meantime, the members of parliament are watching you right now on Morning at TV. What would you tell them? Because they are questioning the manner of the offensive before being told mm. anything. They are still hearing about it in the I, media. I don't think they are questioning the, the, the manner. They are questioning the, uh, the, they are questioning as to why uh, government had not uh, brought, the, uh, brought it to their attention. The government of Uganda did not bring it to attention because the government of Uganda needed an element of surprise in order to be able to, to uh, deal in, uh, with this uh, situation with the, uh, with the terrorists. Effectively, precisely, uh, with the element of surprise. And that's what happened. And I think that, uh, as I told you, the Minister of Defense will come and make a statement to my colleagues in Parliament and explain to them the reason why we need that element of surprise. And I am sure that my colleagues in Parliament, who are very honorable individuals, who are very reasonable individuals, will understand the reason why, and there will be no objection as to, as to that. You know, the reason as to why some of them are still concerned is that what if, maybe otherwise, uh, the offensive goes uh, haywire, goes uh, maybe, uh, maybe a target hits a different target from the intended one, and maybe hits a community of people who are not even connected to the ADF, that, is a, that will have Big, big repercussion to the brand and the name of Uganda? Um, the, the last country uh, that finally gave us the go-ahead to get enter into the DRC mm. was the government of the DRC. Mm. The CDF signed a memorandum of understanding and agreement for operation with the government of the DRC, with the counterpart on the other side. We have had long debates, and there have been many missions to and fro the two countries. And I've been there to watch them and listen to them on these uh, discussions, classified uh, classifications. Among the things 
is that they'll be like in any war uh, or any that the, the, po the potential that there will be uh, civilian and, and uh, casualties, and there'll be might there may be damage to people's property. Now, however, the UPDF damage. whatever the colossal da colossal damage, but but however, the UPDF has made it very clear that they will do everything possible within the means use the current modern technology to ensure that there is absolutely either no damage to, to damage to civilians the properties or no civilian deaths or the most minimum which is un unavoidable uh, will, 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 will happen but there will not be any huge colossal damage mm. the type that uh, one could envisage in the old days when we didn't have precision uh, guided uh, uh, weapons and precision gu guided aircrafts. Thank you so much, Honorable Henry Okedo. Yeah, we are still here at his home in Gorobi. We're going to take a short commercial break and then Morning at NTV continues. I will still be uh, having some more questions for Honorable Henry Okedo, the Minister for Foreign Affairs in charge of international.